The Toronto Maple Leafs in 2016-2017 had two very legitimate candidates for the Calder Trophy. The NHL's Rookie of the Year Award that's given out to the rookie who had the best season, according to the NHL voters. Now, the Maple Leafs had two very good candidates, even though one of them won and the other one was not included on the top three ballot, there still were some very good votes made out for Austin Matthews, who was the winner, and Mitch Marner, who had made his debut the same season and who also finished fifth in the Calder voting, behind Matt Murray, behind Zach Orensky, and behind Patrick Laine, and of course, you know, Matthews too. But this video here is talking about another team who in the year 2020, 2021, or maybe even just 2021, yeah, we probably might not even have it in 2020, to be honest. This is another team that may actually give themselves two very legitimate Calder candidates. In the same way that Mitch Marner and Matthews were back in 2017, the Minnesota Wild of 2021 have themselves two guys in Kirill Kaprizov and in Marco Rossi. Now, let's get into both of these guys and how exactly I think they're going to be able to play in the NHL. First off, we're going to go over what they accomplished previously. We're going to go over what makes them so special in this regard. We're going to go over what exactly I believe they're going to do in 2021. And we're also going to talk about one more thing, what I believe they can do in a best case scenario. Because obviously, you know, I can go out there and say Elias Pettersson can probably score 100 points in the NHL. It's just I don't think he will do it next year. You see, I'd predict Pedersen to get 75 points, but if he ended up the season with 100, I wouldn't be surprised. 100 is a ceiling that I do believe would exist, but it's not what I would guess. An unrealistic ceiling would be like, okay, Pedersen gets 500 points. Yeah, that's not going to happen. If it does happen, I'd be so surprised. 100, I wouldn't be surprised, but it's not what I would guess. So let's go over Kirill Kaprizov first. He was a Minnesota Wild draft pick back in the 2015 NHL entry draft, and that was a long time ago. Kirill Kaprizov today is 23 years old, drafted in the fifth round, 135th overall, who recently signed his ELC to a two-year contract for 2019-20 and 2020-20. 2021 with a 925 OK salary on the AAV. He's a guy who made his living potting goals like crazy in the KHL. In his draft year, he was playing in the KHL for the Metallurg Novokuznets, and he was at 8 points in 31 games. Not amazing, but hey, he was a 17 turning 18 year old player who was playing in the KHL and he got 31 games, so that's not terrible. Obviously, you know, a fifth round pick's probably a little bit late, but at the end of the day, he was selected in the fifth round. It was a different time back then as well. Russian players back in 2015, just five years ago, were seen in a different way that Russian players are seen nowadays. But Kaprizov immediately afterwards in his draft plus one got 27 points in 53 games for the same KHL club. From then on, it was just completely skyward upwards. Salavat Yuleyev, CSKA Moscow, point per game performances. Last year, he was over a point per game with 62 points in 57 games played and 33 goals. Incredible performance over there from the young Russian winger. He also was a guy who led the league in goals, because last year he was the number one goal scorer. In terms of points, he was third, and in terms of points per game, he was tied for first. So obviously, when it comes to the competition that the KHL was able to offer, he was amongst the best of the best. Let's not get away from the international side of things, though, too, either, because he was a captain for the World Junior Russian squad at the 2017 World Juniors, where he had 12 points in seven games played, and he was one of the top players, the best forward of the tournament, he got the most goals, the most points, he was on the All-Star team. During this time, he also was able to get himself the KHL Forward of the Week honors against all the men that were playing over there, too. He also played for the Olympic Athletes from Russia at the Olympic Games in 2018, getting nine points in six games played. And sure, the competition didn't feature NHL guys, but he was still very, very good. Under a goal a game, over a point per game. At the World Championships, he was a point per game. Yeah, Kaprizov's good. Very, very lethal offensive threat. He can absolutely whip it. He's a very, very good offensive package. The shot, the playmaking, the IQ, all that stuff, it's there. It's just the fact that he was under contract in the KHL for so long is why he's only coming over to the NHL now. And for a long time, people were saying amongst NHL-affiliated prospects, Kirill Kaprizov was the best one. So the impact of a guy who was one of the best KHL point producers over the past five years, heading over into the NHL for a first season on a Minnesota Wild team that is kind of depleted of offense because they got rid of Eric Stahl. They still have Kevin Fiala, which is good, but like, come on, Eric Stahl, buddy. This is a team that's going to give him all the opportunities to go out there and earn his spot, earn his role, and actually do 
damage. Let's take a look at Artemi Panarin, because he was 24 years old when he made the NHL, and he was just under a point per game, 77 points in 80 games with the Blackhawks, dubbed the right-handed Patrick Kane. Kirill Kaprizov is turning 24 next year, and he had the same kind of production in the KHL than Panarin did, except he was younger when he did it. So, take with that what you will, Artemi Panarin was literally a Calder winner against Connor McDavid and Shane Gostaspare, but it gives me all the reason to believe that on a Minnesota Wild team like this one, Kirill Kaprizov as the potential number one winger next season is going to have a big, big opportunity at winning this Calder trophy. And, not to mention the other guy who's also probably going to make his debut, Marco Rossi, a guy who was drafted at the most recent NHL entry draft, ninth overall by the Minnesota Wilds. Yeah, he should not have been available at ninth, but he was. Why? Because he's 5'9". But that's not going to deter Marco Rossi, man, because this is a guy who, as one of the older players of the entire NHL draft, was probably, if not absolutely, one of the most NHL-ready players in the entire OHL. This guy was just so strong on his feet, his two-way responsibility was very good, his offensive IQ is exquisite. This guy is able to pass the puck like giving candy to kids out there on Halloween. He's only 5'9", but he is 185 pounds, meaning that he's actually a little bit difficult to shove off the puck. The guy has a pretty good sense of gravity when he plays. His offensive spacing is very good, too. He knows how to separate himself from opponents. He knows how to manipulate opponents as well into opening up passing lanes for his teammates. He is a very, very good hockey player, and that's the reason why he was the number one point producer in the entire CHL this year. 120 points, 56 games played at 18 years old. They drafted him, the Minnesota Wild did, with the intention of giving him all the opportunities of playing him in the NHL right away. And if he's able to excel quickly in the ways that I think people probably believe that he can, this guy might be your immediate number one replacement for Eric Stahl. No disrespect to Marcus Johansson, but Marco Rossi, to me, I'd probably play him today. Even though he is 19, I still want to give him that opportunity. He's currently playing with the ZSC Lions in the NLA, where he has one goal and one assist for that team. Obviously, you know, it's one game, but it is indeed in a pro men's league, which is definitely something great to see. So, heading into the 2021 season, honestly, with the way Marco Rossi is so mature, for a guy his age who's already so stable, and who has so much to prove right away, if you play this guy alongside of Akira Kaprizov, who has already played against men in the KHL for years, and you play my guess, alongside of a Kevin Fiala too, this could be a very underrated, dangerous scoring line immediately. You could say, oh, I'm overhyping Marco Rossi. The guy was at 120 points. He was at two points a game. His 18-year-old year was better than Mitch Marner's last OHL year, and Marner made the NHL right away afterwards, getting himself a few really good points. This is a better point productive season than Jason Spezza back in 2001. And there are a whole bunch of other guys who Marco Rossi had more points than in points per game that are on here too. Alex Galchenyuk was a top pick. Taylor Hall, John Tavares... These guys were not as productive as Marco Rossi, which is why the sky is honestly the limit here. Marco Rossi, I wouldn't be surprised if this guy was able to pot up 60, 70 points immediately. I don't think it's going to happen like that. I think he's probably going to stay a little bit grounded compared to those numbers, but the possibility is there. This guy is already so good. Kaprizov, you have no idea. I wouldn't be surprised if he replicated the Artemi Panarin route and was under a point per game. If I had to make my guesses, I'd probably say Kaprizov maxes out at about 60. Would not be surprised if he broke it, but if I had to make a bet, I'd probably say 60. Marco Rossi, probably a little bit in the 50-ish range. But if these guys get used to the NHL sooner than we would expect them to, we could easily see them reach very, very high numbers very quickly. And as a result, I'm saying that right here, these two, Kaprizov and Rossi, are both in the running for the 2021 Calder race. And that's not even mentioning the other guys they have, too. They have Marat Kusnadinov, they have Vladislav Firstov, they have Matthew Boldy, whom we haven't even mentioned once in this video. On defense, they have Kalen Addison, who I like a lot as well. There are some very good pieces in the pipeline for the Minnesota Wild. Judd Brackett is doing his thing for that squad. And now... Next season, 2021, man, I think we can have ourselves a very good tandem that could probably get both of these guys in the top five of the Calder voting. Who knows? If I had to make a bet, I'd say they're probably both at least top ten. But, you know, that's a very conservative estimate. So talk to me in the comments what you think about Kirill Kaprizov and Marco Rossi. Do you think these guys could win the Calder? Who do you think has a better chance of winning it? I'd say Kaprizov, but let me know what you think in the comments below. Furthermore, because we're on the subject, what do you think the points are going to be? Because depending on opportunity, depending on situational needs, we could see these guys go from, I don't know, 20, 
to 60 points, depending on how exactly they're played. So talk to me in the comments what you think I'd be enjoyed. This video is out of Trolls 99. And bye.